How's it going, everyone? We've got some huge PlayStation news to go over, and if you're looking to pick up a new PlayStation 5 console, come this fall, you might have a new model to pick up, as there's been a lot of discussion around the PlayStation 5 Pro, and Tom Warren from The Verge has a lengthy article about some of the details about the PS5 Pro, and the fact that developers are getting ready for it. Now, it looks like there's a potential for the console to be released this fall. It could bleed into 2025, but let's go over the article. As it notes, Sony is getting ready to release a more powerful PS5 console, possibly by the end of this year. After reports of a leaked PS5 Pro specifications surfaced recently, the Verge has obtained a full list of specs for the upcoming console. Sources familiar with Sony's plans tell me that developers are already being asked to ensure their games are compatible with this upcoming console with a focus on improving ray tracing. Generally speaking, uh, even if a game is not going to take full advantage of a new console specifications, you still want that game to be fully compatible and make sure there's no issues, so that makes a lot of sense, just so a lot of these devs are going to be aware of it. Don't expect, let's say, the PlayStation 5 Pro to come out in the fall of this year for every game right away to start immediately utilizing the PS5 Pro. I would expect it to be the major third-party titles right out the gate, and I'm sure that Sony uh, will be implementing upgrades into their first party titles over time. I wouldn't expect it to be a gigantic amount right out the gate. I would imagine it would be a decent amount and then they would continue to release patches, updates, and things of that nature. Codename Trinity, the PlayStation 5 Pro model will include a more powerful GPU and a slightly faster CPU mode. All of Sony's changes point to a PS5 Pro that will be far more capable of rendering games with ray tracing enabled or hitting higher resolutions and frame rates in certain title. Sony appears to be encouraging developers to use graphics features like ray tracing more with the PS5 Pro, with games able to use a Trinity Enhanced label if they provide significant enhancement. That means PS5 Pro Enhanced Trinity is the codename. Sony expects GPU rendering on the PS5 Pro to be about 45% faster than the standard PlayStation 5. According to documents outlining the upcoming console, the PS5 Pro GPU will be larger and use faster system memory to help improve ray tracing in games. Sony is also using a more powerful ray tracing architecture. Trinity is a high-end version of PlayStation 5 reads one document, with Sony indicating it'll continue to sell the standard PS5 after this new model launches. Very much a question. Are they going to go the route of slashing the price of the PlayStation 5 to, let's say, $400, $450, and then the PS5 Pro can slide in there at $500? I don't know. I would find it to be more likely that we're going to see the PS5 Pro come out at $550 or $6, but we'll see ultimately how that turns out. Sony's expecting game developers to have a single package that'll support both PS5 and PS5 Pro consoles with existing games able to be patched for higher performance. It's going to be a case-by-case -case basis, which developers decide to go back into the vault and upgrade uh, their titles. I understand developers are able to order test kits right now, and that Sony is expecting every game submitted to certification in August to be compatible with PS5 Pro. Insider Gaming first reported the full PS5 Pro specs and indicated the console is set to release during the 2024 holiday period. Now, while Sony is improving the GPU side of the PS5 Pro, the CPU will be the same as the standard PS5, but with a new mode that clocks it higher. Trinity has a mode that targets 3.85 GHz CPU frequency. That's around 10% more than the regular PS5, and a standard mode will be at 3.5 GHz. The standard mode operates just like a regular PS5, where a certain amount of power is allocated to the CPU at 3.5 GHz, and then the power budget allows for it for or lower frequencies if the PS5 is performing power-intensive operations. In the new high uh, CPU frequency mode for the PS5 Pro, more power is allocated to the CPU, which means a slightly less than the GPU. The GPU is downclocked by around 1.5%, but that's fine because you do have that lead room where the GPU is so much more powerful than the existing console's GPU that giving up a little bit in the GPU by, but offsetting it with a CPU increase that makes a lot of sense in a case-by-case -case basis where certain areas it's going to perform better with the higher CPU frequency. The PS5 Pro will also have some changes to system memory for developers on top of that. More details are ran and a new architecture will be rolled out as well. This increase in memory speed and allocations may be useful for Sony's new PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution PSSR support. This is Sony's uh, competitor to NVIDIA DLSS, AMD FSR, improves frame rates and image quality on PlayStation. 
PlayStation Sony has built a custom architecture for machine learning. DLSS is incredibly effective. FSR is quite good as well. FSR 3 and uh, continued updates to that. NVIDIA DLSS frame generation has been quite good. NVIDIA's implementation is very, in various AI technology has been pretty decent. Obviously, it's not a complete blanket solution for lower end hardware, but it's pretty damn effective, all things considered. This new architecture supports Sony's custom PSSR upscaling solution, which is designed to replace games' existing temporal anti aliasing or upsampling implementation. Sony notes that inputs are quite similar to DLSS and or FSR. This support requires around 250 megabytes of memory. So, a lot more details in the article that I will link below in the description box. The PlayStation 5 Pro seems to be a little bit more of a significant upgrade, to say the least, over the PS4 Pro, based on the information that we have right now. The PS4 Pro, let's be honest, guys, it was not a necessary purchase. I remember getting really excited for the PS4 Pro, and I was so hyped for Final Fantasy XV that I ended up buying a PS4 Pro, and looking back at it, was it really worth the $400 plus that I spent on it? Probably not. Uh, with the PlayStation 5 Pro, the reality is... To me, it feels like yesterday that the PS5 came out, but it was all the way back in fall of 2020, and maybe it's a case of some games not being optimized as well, but let's be real here, guys. The PlayStation 5 is being pushed to the absolute brink. Those of you that were expecting 4K 60fps across the board pre-generation, as far as pre-PS5 being out, you guys were kidding yourself, you guys were setting yourself up for disappointment, but I thought 60fps and good visuals were gonna be a relative standard, and then I play abominations like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The game is great, don't get it twisted, game is absolutely awesome, but that performance mode is an absolute atrocity, an absolute abomination, and let's be real, Final Fantasy XVI's performance mode, not all too great either. And we've seen quite a few performance modes, um, you know, while it can push to 60 FPS, not be the best. We've seen games, let's be real, it wasn't, it was kind of inexcusable with like a Gotham Knights not even having a performance mode. Plague Tale Requiem didn't have a performance mode right out the gate, but a lot of these games, I don't think it would be uh, that likely that you can expect 60 FPS across the board for every outing. If Starfield, for example, ultimately comes out on PS5, guess what? Not gonna be 60 FPS. And it would be interesting if Sony did a PS5 uh, Pro and uh, Microsoft didn't do a souped up Xbox, so to speak. And then like, let's say a Starfield came out. Would you wanna be in a world where a Microsoft published title in Starfield gets PlayStation 5 Pro support and suddenly the best console version of Starfield, a Microsoft published game, is on a PlayStation console. I get it at the grand scheme of things, it wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world, but it is gonna be a case-by-case -case basis as far as developers in terms of how much they want to optimize for the PS5 Pro. I would imagine that Sony is gonna make it, that developers are gonna be pushed to go that route, and I would imagine most devs would wanna do it. Look at a Star Wars Jedi Survivor, again, another game that certainly had its shortcomings as far as performance goes. The PS5 Pro, I can see where it'll be an advantageous solution for those of you that want the best performance possible. It's just I also understand that a lot of you guys bought your PS5 in what, 2021, maybe 2022? Two years later, upgrading to another console? Um, might not be the thing that most of you guys wanna do if we're looking at a fall release. But at the end of the day, if you didn't buy a PS5 at launch, if you waited until 2022, you probably have some sensibilities and you weren't that desperate to get the console at launch like I was. Now, I did pre-order it and I was able to snag a pre-order set and have to pay juiced up prices. But again, if you were able to wait a year or two, I don't think you're gonna be the consumer that's gonna be like, oh, I need the PS5 Pro right now. The, these Pro consoles and these Pro variants, just like the Xbox One X, just like the PS4 Pro, is always going to be the consumer that wants the latest technology. Like, I am going to moan and talk about the FF7 Rebirth performance mode, but at the end of the day, most people are going to play that game in the graphics mode, and it's going to run at 30 FPS, and it's going to be fine. And for those of you that do want to play with ray tracing, like you're going to turn on ray tracing, you're going to be fine with 30 FPS, or ray tracing doesn't bother you that much, you turn it off, and uh, you'll be good to go. You don't need the ray tracing bells and whistles because it hampers performance so much. Again, the Pro Console seems like it's going to be something for the absolute enthusiast, and even then... 
Not even for the real, real enthusiasts, because the super enthusiasts would just buy a high-end PC if they're really looking to spend, like, a lot of bread. The PS5 Pro, like, at the end of the day, it's not gonna be seven, eight hundred dollars. It's just not gonna be that level of investment. Um, I would expect that it would cap out at six hundred dollars. I cannot expect it to be more than that, and really, I would rather it be five hundred. I think once you get over five hundred and you're listing it at five forty nine, five ninety nine, like that, just to the eyes. Does not look like a great price point. Not, doesn't look like a price point people want to spend. But again, the Pro is an enthusiast console, so you pricing it accordingly doesn't matter as much given that you're already aiming this console to be something that is for, again, those enthusiasts that are willing to spend the extra dollar to get the best performance possible. And yeah, there's going to be some people that don't have a PS5 yet and they're just going to jump right into the Pro. But if you don't have a PS5 yet, unless it's for a reason like you have a PC and you've been playing on PC... If you want to get a PS5 and you're like still rocking a PS4, I don't see that audience jumping into the PS5 Pro either. I foresee them getting a PS5 uh, now that it's getting a little bit more discounted. Those Spider-Man bundles are going for like 450, 460, and that's a pretty damn good deal. All things considered, the PS5, Spider-Man 2, uh, that whole shebang. So I could see the PS5 Pro being $500, and I think that would be ideal given the state of the market. But also, I you do have to balance it with the fact that it is an enthusiast-centric product, and uh, you know, can they get away with 600? I feel like Sony's pricing on some of these hardware on some of their hardware releases it has been quite high with VR2, some of the accessories that they've dropped. So it wouldn't shock me if it was $600 because I think that enthusiast audience, they are going to spend a premium on PlayStation content on PlayStation hardware and PlayStation accessories and PlayStation branded stuff. The PS Portal, you can make an argument. It's pretty pricey for what it is. So $600 uh, wouldn't shock me whatsoever. If we were living in an ideal world, I personally would like every generation to start off with three models right out the gate. Like you have your digital only console, which the PS5 had. You have the standard model with a disc drive. And then you have the souped up model right out the gate. And that's like whatever, $600, $700. And you could price it higher because the standard model is there right at launch. And again, with the enthusiast model, you wouldn't have to care as much. I get why they like to do the mid-gen refresh, and it seems like this is a formula that is working for Sony, given that they followed the exact same re uh, release structure with the PS4, with, I believe, the regular PS4 came out, then the PS4 Slim, then the PS4 Pro, and they followed the exact same model with the PlayStation 5. The only difference this time around is we had a digital-only console as well. I get it that for a lot of my audience, and we're uploading deals videos and talking about getting games cheap, is the PS5 Pro going to be for a large portion of my audience. I don't know, but I can see why it's happening given how some of these games are getting pushed to the absolute edge. And if you are trying to push for 60 FPS with ray tracing, that's just not going to be feasible uh, with the current PS5. Um, but also keep in mind that before you know it, Another three years is going to go by, and at that point, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 6, and I feel like these years are going faster and faster, so if you buy the PS5 Pro, understand that come 2027, 2028, we'll be talking about the PlayStation 6. Yeah, we're getting to that point uh, again, so keep that in mind as well, but that'll do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Interested to hear your guys' takes. As always, thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.